Hey everyone, good morning or good afternoon. My name is William White. I am a field marketing specialist for Artex Tile and Stone. I wanted to take a minute and thank you for joining us for today's Learn From Home webinar. In an effort to stay connected during this time of social distancing, we will host an Artex Tile and Stone webinar every other Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. In two weeks, we will feature a brand new course focusing on mortars and making proper mortar selection. In today's presentation, we will be covering Artex waterproofing for tile and stone installations. I will turn it over to our presenter, Technical Manager of Artex Tile and Stone Installation Systems, Mr. Mark Penine. Mark is active in many industry committees, including the ANSI 108 Standards Committee, NTCA Technical Committee, MMSA, and ICRI Substrate Committee. We will be holding a question and answer portion at the end of the presentation. Please feel free to submit your questions in real time using the chat function. Take it away, Mark. Great, thanks, William. As William said, today's webinar, we, we will be covering bonded waterproof membranes. Um, we'll take a look at the options available to do so, and also the accessories needed while waterproofing. ANSI 118.10 is the designation for bonded waterproof membrane. It's for thin set ceramic tile and dimensional stone installations that are functioning as barriers to positive liquid water migration, meaning from the top down. They can be trowel applied, liquid applied, as well as sheet membrane options. Showers are the most popular area where waterproofing is needed. Depending on the drain being used will dictate how the waterproofing connects to the drain itself. Here are two common options. On the left, we have the standard point drain with weep holes. And on the right, we have an integrated bonding flange. This is an example of an integrated, I'm sorry, this is an example of an installation method for a bonded waterproof membrane with a weep hole point drain system. The waterproofing has to be tied into the bottom flange with a weep hole protector in place. If you're not able to purchase a manufactured weep hole protector, Gravel can be used to also cover the weep holes to make sure that your mud bed does not get clogging up the drain holes. Some people refer to this method as the top hat method because it actually looks like a top hat. You're going to actually install the waterproofing from the wall to the center over the existing mud bed. And then you're going to take the waterproofing down to the drain, tie it in and then pack and fill around the drain itself. The following TCNA CAD drawing shows how a waterproof membrane ties into an integrated bonding flange. The flange is flushed with the mortar bed and then the waterproofing is installed directly over the mortar bed and bonds to the bonding flange. This is a complete topside waterproof application. When preparing a shower to receive a bonded waterproof membrane uh, as a pan liner, a couple go-to products we recommend are Artex AM100 pre-tile ramping and smoothing mortar and Artex A38 mix rapid set pre-mix screed. AM100 is a ramping and smoothing mortar for concrete and other masonry surfaces. It's great as a pre-slope under your waterproofing membrane or pan liner, and it's perfect to slope recessed concrete for curbless showers. 
It's also ideal for swimming pools and weather wet areas. It's rapid setting, so you can install waterproofing in just two hours on top of AM100. You can install it from a quarter of an inch all the way up to an inch and a quarter in one lift. It can be used for both walls as well as floors, interior as well as exterior. It's also an excellent brown coat for stone veneer systems. Artex A38 Rapid Set Premix Screed. This product is a fast track mud bed solution. It's rapid hardening. You can walk on it in three hours. You can install towel and natural stone, even moisture sensitive stone in as little as four hours. You can use this product both interior and exterior. After only one day, the compressive and tensile strength exceeds ordinary mud beds after 28 days. It can also be used for underfloor heating like hydronic heat uh, pipes or electric wires. Let's watch William demonstrate installing A38 mix. So we're ready to start our A38 installation. What I'm gonna do is simply give myself an elevation mark here. Because this is already pre-sloped with AM100, we're going right along at an inch and a quarter, which is our minimum thickness for the A38. Now I can simply apply A38 right in there. So our A38 is mixed to that nice snowball consistency. So this is what I would consider to be a perfect mix where it just stays together, but if I drop it, falls apart. That's a that's a perfect mix for A38. So that's that's typically my general test is can I throw it up? To, if it was too dry when I threw it up, it would just fall apart. And if it was too wet when I drop it, it wouldn't break. So that is a perfect mix. Oh, almost forgot. Got to have some positive weed protection there. So just putting a little bit of gravel in there. William, while you do that, I'm also going to um, talk a little bit about different applications for A38. Um, you can have a bonded application with our E100. Uh, you can have an unbonded application, which William is doing here, and also a floating application over rigid styrofoam. Um, so if you have a project where uh, weight is a concern above above grade and uh, they want to fill in some of that space, they can do that with uh, rigid styrofoam to take up some of that space and then they can do a floating screed on top of it. So as you can notice here, a cutaway view of what this entire shower would look like so that when we're done, everyone can see all the different layers of the assembly. Chris, how are we doing with questions? We are clear on questions at the moment. All right. That means Mark is doing a great job of explaining everything.
Arctix has a variety of waterproofing options. S1K is a one component waterproofing and crack isolation membrane. Our most popular product is the Arctix 8 plus 9, which is a rapid waterproofing and crack isolation membrane as well. We also have the Arctix SK175 waterproofing membrane and vapor retarder. Arctix 8 plus 9 is a cement based fast track waterproofing. It's a two coat process, but it's rapid setting, like I said. So you can towel in just 90 minutes. When used as a shower pan liner, you can flood test it in just four hours. You get a better bond with a mortar to a cement based waterproofing product. If it is two components, there's no water required. You have a gallon of the eight and nine pounds of the cement. It's also anti-fracture up to an eighth of an inch. And it is approved by Atmo as a suitable shower pan liner. A plus nine comes in two sizes. It comes in a convenient kit, which is again, a one gallon of acrylic and nine pounds of cement. And for your larger projects, it comes in a three gallon unit of eight and a 27 pound of the unit of nine. It's also available in white as well as gray. Some people ask us, why do you need a white waterproofing? Well, we actually took information from the field and told us when they're installing translucent glass, even though they're using a white thin set mortar, when they beat their glass in and compress it, if the mortar displaces, you could see the dark background of the waterproofing. So by using a white waterproofing product and a white mortar, you're guaranteeing that you're always gonna have a white background. The convenient kit gets 100 square feet per unit, and the commercial kit will get you 300 square feet per unit. Again, the first coat's gonna dry in 30 minutes, the second coat 60 minutes. So you can actually install towel in as early as 90 minutes, or when used as a shower pan liner, flood test in four hours. Let's take a look how eight plus nine looks when it's installed. Again, this is the convenient kit, great for showers, two components that come in the box, your eight and your nine. The mix is one to one by volume. So you can mix the whole gallon with the whole bag of nine, or you can take one part of the liquid and one part of the cement to do smaller projects or to do all your taping first. You wanna mix it with a high speed drill. And this is the consistency the A plus nine should look like when you pour it out. First thing you wanna do is make sure your substrate is clean. And then you wanna apply your SK mesh in all your corners, as well as your change of plane. The best way of doing that is using a 3 16 by 5 30 second V-notch trowel. Place your SK mesh into the A plus 9. And then just use a drywall tape knife to smooth it out. Then you're going to apply a coat of A plus 9 on top of the SK mesh. You're then going to do your field application with a 3 16 snap roller. We would like you to go in one direction for the first coat. You're gonna have between 45 minutes and an hour of pot light. So you have plenty of time to work around a shower from beginning to end to do two coats. And as you see, I'm doing the second coat in the opposite direction. This way, you wanna make sure that if there's any pinholes from the first application, 
you'll be sure to cover those up with your second application in the opposite direction. For those installers that prefer a single component product, Artex offers the S1K. It fits the bill. It's a pre-mixed, very easy to use waterproofing product. It's a little bit thicker than some one component products on the market, which will give a better coverage in the first coat. Uh, no mixing required, just take the lid off the pail and put your 316 snap ruler right into the pail or your paintbrush and, and install. It's good for interior floors as well as walls. Um, it has a very nice workable consistency and because of the thicker consistency, it has minimal drips and splatters when you're working. It's great for all bathrooms, showers, and other wet areas as well. It's also an anti-fracture membrane up to an eighth of an inch. comes in a three and a half gallon that's going to cover approximately 195 and a half square uh, feet or a one gallon unit for 56 and three quarters square feet. Again, the first coat's going to take one to two hours to dry and then your second coat 12 to 16. You can flood test within 12 to 24 hours. So it takes a little bit longer than the A plus nine so you're not going to be able to really install your waterproofing and towel the first day. You're always going to do all your waterproofing with the S1K the first day and start your toweling the second day. Let's take a look at the S1K being installed. It comes with a nice plastic liner on top to keep the material fresh. Same application as the A plus nine. You always want to treat your corners and change the planes first. I apply it with a paintbrush, just a cheap chip paintbrush from Home Depot or Lowe's. Again, embed your SK mesh into the material while it's wet. Take your drywall knife, smooth it out. and then apply your first coat of S1K on top of the SK mesh. Then you're ready to roll the field with your 3 16th inch nap roller. Very good coverage for a one component liquid waterproofing membrane. You're going to come back within one to two hours and do your second coat in the opposite direction again. And then you're ready to towel the next day. Some installers just feel more comfortable using a sheet applied waterproof membrane. For those, we have Artex SK-175 waterproof membrane and vapor retarder. It's pliable, highly durable sheet membrane. It has the best perm rating in the industry at 0 0.04 perms. It's ideal for all types of shower, as well as steam showers, which includes commercial steam showers. Two coats ensures a uniform thickness. It's very easy to work with and cut. You want to install it with one of Artex polymer modified thin sets like X5, X77, or um, you can use a rapid setting product like X7R.
The SK-175 is also perfect for pools and other wet areas. Only one layer is required um, for pools. Some of our competitor materials require two layers of a sheet waterproof membrane, but SK-175 is only requires one, one layer. It's ideal also for balconies, patios, and other exterior tile installations. It comes in two roll sizes, a smaller roll of 108 square feet and a larger roll of 323 square feet. We also have the seam pipe collar, uh, as well as the seam tape, the inside and outside corners. When waterproofing, addressing the change of planes, corners and seams is the most critical step. The accessories we recommend for RX A plus nine and S1K are the SK mesh. They come in two roll sizes, the SK 25 meter roll or the SK 50 meter roll. We also have the 36 inch wide roll of, of, F, of SK mesh for large crack isolation jobs, where you're using either A plus nine or the S1K for crack isolation. For the SK-175, we have the SK-175 seam tape. Here we'll show how the SK-175 is installed. I'm using the Artex X77. You wanna key it into the substrate, making sure you have a good mechanical bond, and then you wanna comb it out with a 3 16 by 5 32nd V-notch or a quarter by 3 16 V-notch. You wanna straighten out your comb ridges Place the material into the wet X77. And then you wanna smooth it out, get all the air out from underneath the membrane, out through the edges. When addressing the seams, we have two options. We have the overlap method, which I'm doing here. It's going to overlap the, the first sheet two inches with the second sheet. The next option is the butt joint option where you're gonna place SK-175 directly next to the first sheet of SK-175. And then you're gonna treat that seam with SK-175 seam tape. Now that all of our waterproofing is complete, let's discuss two popular mortars Artex recommends for installing your tile. The first one is X5. X5 is our workhorse. It's highly versatile. And it's ideal for large format tiles. You can install it up to a three quarter inch square notch trowel. You can set porcelain, quarry, ceramic, and most natural stone. If you have a moisture sensitive stone, then we wanna move you into another product like N23 or X32 or S28 for those type of products.
but for other natural stones that are not moisture sensitive, X5 is perfect. It has ex excellent sag resistance. It has a three hour pot life, can be used both interior as well as exterior. It's gonna coverage approximately 90 square feet when using a quarter by quarter notch trowel. And it comes in a lightweight 40 pound bag in both gray and white. One of our well, uh, best well-known products on the market is Artex X77 Microtech. It's a fiber reinforced towel and stone mortar. We say it's the most advanced and versatile towel and stone mortar on the market for a number of reasons. The product has fibers in it and these fibers give the product tangible benefits. As you can see on the right in these pictures, uh, you can hang very heavy tile and stone on a vertical application. It also has a true 60 minute open time. It's a very creamy, a very unique creamy consistency. It's extremely flexible because of those fibers. It's ideal for high traffic areas, swimming pools, and exterior facades. You get excellent coverage at 110 square feet out of a 40 pound bag. And it also comes in both gray and white. To complete your towel installation, Artex offers a full range of grout options. I would like to focus on two of our, mo our most popular options. First, is the Artex FL Rapid Set Flexible Grout. Its unique revolutionary consistency will offer a fuller and stronger grout joint. When you mix the FL, according to our water ratio on the bag, you will have a consistency very similar to what you see in this picture. It's gonna be a little bit wetter than what you're normally used to with other grouts on the market. It's supposed to be like this. As long as you're within that water range, you're gonna have a product that's gonna work very easily and perform very well. It's stain resistant and water repellent. It's very easy to place because of that consistency. It has a very spherical and fine sand. It's freeze thaw resistant, and it's also resistant to mold and mildew and it comes in 35 Artex colors in both 25 pounds as well as 10 pounds. William's gonna demonstrate the Artex FL and how it's mixed and applied. But I want to show you a unique characteristic of the Artex FL grout. Do you guys see what that water is doing? So it's not soaking in, it's actually sitting on top of the of the grout. So the grout itself is hydrophobic. Hydrophobic means scared of water. So now when we go to mix it, you'll notice at first it looks really clumpy and kind of weird for grout. That's because that water actually requires that speed and just keep mixing for that two to three minutes required for our grout. So you'll notice that my, my FL grout is very fluid, FL fluid grout, horrible consistency. 
it should pour out of the bucket because ethyl grout, being as fluid as it is, you know, typically grout is mixed kind of like peanut butter and you have to smash it down into all those grout joints. But here, and you'll notice what those grout joints do. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but they, they actually swell up just a little tiny bit because that grout is flowing in and filling from the bottom up. William and Greg Meyer has a great question while you're doing that. Can I add more water if the grout starts to stiffen up while I'm working with it? Uh, so with, with any Ardex product, we don't ever want to add more water to it, but we can remix it and, and re-temper that material as long as we don't add any additional water. Easy. Epoxies have come a long way over the years. Now epoxies are installed in residential applications as well as commercial applications. Ardex WA is a 100% solids epoxy grout as well as an adhesive. It's so easy to use and clean, you wouldn't believe it's an epoxy. You can, again, it can be used as a grout as well as an adhesive. So you can inset all types of towels with Ardex WA. You can grout up to a half inch wide grout joints. It's two components. It's easy to mix in its own container. You want to use it where maximum chemical resistance or other hygiene and cleanliness is required. Again, it can be used in residential applications, but it's very good for commercial applications like food processing, plants, industrial or institutional commercial facilities. It's also great for swimming pools, hot tubs, and other wet areas. The Ardex WA also comes in all 35 color options. William is gonna demonstrate a little bit about We'll first discuss a little bit about WA and its container, and then show you how to mix it and apply. Cardboard box, and the color and hardener are in the top, the sand and the resin are in the bottom. So mixing is just as easy as Mark said. We're simply going to pop open the top. So we've got our sand and our, our sorry, our color and hardener are in the top. So we're just going to scrape that right into the bottom. So once I've dumped the top into the bottom, I'm going to use the Ardex T2 Mini Mixer. And what I like about the T2 Mini is it goes on a cordless drill and allows mixing. Now, Yes, this is an epoxy grout that I'm going to be mixing with a cordless drill. So does anyone know why, you know, typically it's not recommended to mix epoxy grout with a drill? Once I've mixed our WA, 
that's the biggest difference with our epoxy grout. Straight out of the bucket, you'll notice that it doesn't have any slump or any sag to it. So I do have my DTA epoxy grout float. Now epoxy grout floats are typically a little bit harder rubber. And what that's gonna do is, when I go to grout, I can actually clean it off the edges of the tile just a little bit easier. So, so my recommendation is to simply take some dollops and stick them to the wall. Because you'll notice they just hang there. They don't even sag down the wall. That way I can maintain that one hour pot life. and then squeegee it off. Cleaning, the handle allows me to apply even pressure so that I don't dish out my grout joints. So the scotch Bright is required. If I immediately started cleaning with a sponge, that's not going to work very well and I'm not going to be very happy. Um, because it's just going to ball up and gum up on the sponge. So again, the advantages of an epoxy grout being 100% solids like Artex WA is that this is going to provide you the maximum in stain and chemical resistance. So I do recommend letting this firm up. Um, me per so that's the end of our presentation today. We would like to take this opportunity to open it up to questions. Take the question. Uh, William can answer, or he can present the question. Yes, Mark, we have a question from Kristen. Um, can you touch on what a flood test is? Yeah, absolutely. So a flood test, and really it all depends on the municipality of where the home is located and what is required by that municipality plumbing organization. But a flood test is when after you've installed your waterproof membrane, whether it's Artex liquid waterproof membranes like the 8 plus 9 or the S1K or a sheet waterproof membrane like the SK175 or a, sh a shower pan liner like a chloroline liner, after that's installed, you want to test it to make sure it's watertight. You would plug it the drain with a plumber's plug or if you don't have a plumber's plug, you can plug, plug it or um, some other type of plastic or uh, tape it. You want to fill the shower pan with water. 
a couple inches high and you want to mark it with a marker. You want to allow that water to sit in there overnight, 24 hours. You come back the next day and you want to see what the mark is. You want to see if any of that water has left the shower pan and if it's leaking. If it, if it hasn't changed the height and the water is exactly where you left it the night before, you can drain your water, dry it out, and you're ready to start your tiling installation. If you've lost some water, then you know you may have a small heat a leak or a pinhole somewhere, and you need to maybe put a second coat on. Mark, we have a question about how do you know if the water waterproofing, so I'm presuming that they're talking about a liquid applied, is applied correctly, um, as in thick enough? So every manufacturer has a thickness requirement for waterproofing in particular, as well as crack isolation. Um, when you're using our Ardex 8 plus 9, it has sand in it. So that sand is going to produce a certain consistency when it's applied with a 3 8 inch nap roller. And we know by testing that as long as you do two coats, you will achieve the proper thick, thickness of A plus 9. For S1K, you need to achieve a 20 mil thickness. You need a mil gauge to determine the thickness of a liquid applied product. So a lot of guys are familiar with mill gauges. Just get a mill gauge, dip it in, 20 mils thick, and, you, and you're ready to go with the S1. Uh, we have a question from Corey. How do you know when the first coat of 8 plus 9 is dry? Does the color change? Yes. For 8 plus 9, it actually works in the opposite way that paint or other uh, liquid products work. It dries to a darker consistency rather than a lighter consistency. But the best way is always to touch it. When you touch it and you're not transferring to your finger, you're ready to install your second coat. Uh, <laughs> we have a question about grout. Uh, where would you use a half inch grout joint from John? Well, in today's tile and stone uh, industry, it's very minimal, but in most cases, um, it would be with an ungauged natural stone. It could be a stack stone application. It could be a blue stone floor application. Okay. But most of your porcelain tile are going to have a very narrow joint. It's mostly going to be in your rough natural stone applications. We have a question from Norma. What does WA stand for? Uh, it's a good question. <laughs> we uh, There's really no meaning behind WA. Um, it's a German, Artex is a German company and they have uh, the naming of these products and they don't particularly mean what the product actually is. So in the ISO standards, WA also stands for water cleanable and abrasion resistant in reference to grout. So that is uh, an explanation I use when describing WA. There we go. Uh, we have a question from Craig also about the WA grout. Um, is it thick enough to burn up the brushes on a cordless drill? Um, I mean, depending upon the manufacturer of that drill, of course, you could have a, a drill that's um, not made for that type of application, but we've never had that issue with some of the drills that we've purchased here. Um, so, but I'm not going to say it's not possible. I'm sure if you buy an economical drill for some small home projects, it's probably not the proper drill for that. So here's a great question from Brian. What is the difference between a vapor barrier and a vapor retardant? And then in reference to a waterproofing. Okay, so a vapor barrier um, is 
is going to allow some vapor to pass through it. A vapor retarder will almost stop the vapor completely. I'm sorry, other way around. Vapor retarders can allow a very little bit of vapor to pass through. A vapor barrier is going to stop vapor to pass through it. A waterproof membrane is going to prevent top side waterproofing, liquid water from penetrating down below from above it, where um, a vapor barrier and a vapor retarder prevent vapor from coming up from the bottom up. So would it be fair to say that a top side waterproofing is not typically suitable for either a vapor barrier or a vapor retardant? In most cases, you're correct, unless that product is specified as both a topside waterproofing product as well as a vapor barrier or vapor retarder. You would have to check the manufacturer's tech data to determine that. Okay. So we have a question from Alan. During a site supervision, uh, during application, what key things should an architect be looking for? For what kind of a project? Um, so what I'm what I'm guessing he's saying is that uh, you know, as an architect walking onto a job, what key points should they be looking for to understand if the or to identify if the waterproofing is being applied correctly? Oh, okay. So of course, um, again, getting back to uh, the manufacturer's instructions. Um, their mill thickness, their requirements for waterproofing, and making sure that the plumber or the towel installer is doing a flood test. Um, I think those are the two main things you want to keep an eye out for, for waterproof. So my friend Ward has a question about um, when would you use the um, with reference to SK-175, when would you use the butt versus the overlap method? I would um, only use the overlap method in interior shower installations um, for exterior application and in poles. I would use the butt seam with the SK-175 seam tape. Um, in particular, for pull applications, we would require that that SK-175 seam tape is applied with the 8 plus 9 so that no moisture can penetrate underneath the seam tape behind the sheet membrane. So we have a question about, uh, with so many waterproofing options from Ardex, uh, how do you choose? So, you know, we have S1K, A plus nine, SK175, you know, we have multiple different options. How does a specifier, contractor, property owner, how do they select which one should be used on a project? So um, there's a couple approaches. The first approach would be, is this an exterior application? If it is, then it narrows it down to both A plus nine and SK-175. Um, the other um, important application is, is this a commercial steam room where you need a vapor retarder? If that's the case, you need to use SK-75. But for most interior waterproofing, showers, tub areas, laundry rooms, kitchen floors, you can use any of the three. If you're an installer, you may want to pick with your comfort level. You may also want to choose the speed 
like eight plus nine can be used in a fast, fast track application where you can actually waterproof and tile in the same day. So that may be a benefit to you. So those are the main reasons you use a waterproof, certain waterproof product. Perfect. And, and you actually answered a follow-up question uh, that we had about application, which is the best waterproof membrane for a steam room or a steam shower. So, so I don't know if that's residentially or commercially, but maybe you can touch on both. Yep. So there's two different types of steam rooms or showers. One is your residential steam shower. That is where it is your home shower that has a steam unit placed in it. Most people will use this steam shower every now and then, maybe most at most once or twice a week. If that's the case, you can use Artex 8 plus 9 as a waterproofing product in that steam shower or the SK-175. For commercial steam rooms that are in fitness gyms where the steam room is on 24-7, you must use Artex K175. Perfect. Thank you, Mark. Um, we have a question from Jeff. He says, this is a two-part question. Can 8 plus 9 dry too fast? Uh, say an application in direct sunlight, um, will that affect the product? So say like a masonry veneer installation where we're waterproofing an exterior facade. I think the biggest concern would be uh, the temperature of the substrate outside. So if um, you're installing A plus nine outside, you want to be um, aware of your surface temperature as well as your air temperature, but the surface temperature the most because once you apply that product, it's going to uh, cause that product to flash off very quickly. And it may have an effect on the the product itself. So um, I would recommend either applying your 8 plus 9 early in the morning or later in the evening if you're working in Arizona, for instance, uh, where it's extremely hot. Um, if you have an opportunity to tent your working area, be sure to do that. Keep your boxes or your bags in gallons of 8 plus 9 in a cool, dry area. Don't have them sitting outside in the sunlight or in the back of a van. Perfect. And the uh, second part to Jeff's question, which I understand because he's in the Pacific Northwest where it rains frequently, can A plus 9 be applied on a wet substrate? So, you know, again, back to that exterior facade, let's say that it's rained overnight and that facade may be damp. No. We want the surface to be dry to apply eight plus nine. So that's where proper tenting would probably come into play in that application? Correct. And we have one final question. Uh, I heard there are new Artex grout colors since uh, we've been touched on grout a little bit in this presentation also. Absolutely, and I, um, the grouts are going to be launched in April 1st, I believe. Uh, we're going to have 36 uh, grout colors. Um, a lot of these grout colors are brand new. Um, I'm looking forward to um, see how our, our contractors like the new palette that we're offering. I'm excited about it. Um, we've been taking a lot of feedback from our customers and um, we've done a, our team has done a great job coming up with um, some new color palettes. So the follow-up question immediately to that was, where, where can somebody find out about the new grout colors? Um, I believe the distributors may have the new grout kits. I'm not certain about that, but I believe the new grout kits were shipped to the distributors already. So I would first start with their local tile distributor, Artex tile distributor. Perfect. Thank you, Mark. That pretty much does it for all of our questions. Okay. I, I want to thank everyone for taking the time out today for Tile Tuesday, but I also want to remind you we'll be back in two weeks for Artex mortars on March 16th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please sign up for that webinar. Thank you very much.